With some proper cake and three beautiful seconds of screen time, Kaveh extravagantly joins the Genshin scene, giving his own artistic creativity on Dendro teams. YouTube Frogs, welcome to a complete 3.6 Kaveh guide covering the most essential information you'll need to make your baby girls shine. We'll be covering his talents, playstyles, optimal weapons, optimal artifacts, constellations, and team comps alongside a gameplay showcase. Let's begin. From C0 to C6, the core of Kaveh's kit centers around his affinity for Dendro cores and his burst Dendro infusion. While he can work with all bloom related damage, he primarily synergizes with just the Dendro cores themselves and not their Hyperbloom or Burgeon extensions. His normal charge attacks are a unique twist on Claymore users, wielding them almost like a catalyst instead of an actual heavy sword. In doing so, Kaveh achieves a sense of elegance when performing attacks, makes using charge attacks look effortless like a helicopter or a Borp spin. His skill is a simple radar scanning ability responsible for immediately exploding Dendro cores like Nilu's passive, dealing AoE Dendro damage, and generating particles. With his burst, Kaveh enters a Dendro infusion state, and also boosts Dendro core damage much like Nilu's passive. In many ways, Kaveh incorporates a lot of Nilu's niche use, but in his own specific ways. Let's take a closer look at his abilities. Kaveh's first priority talent investment, Painted Dome is responsible for normal, charge, plunging, Dendro infusion, and increased Dendro core explosion damage. He first explodes all Dendro cores in his burst area, then gains these enhanced combat abilities for 12 seconds, during which he has increased interruption and activates his A4 passive, further increasing his elemental mastery by up to 100 after performing those normal charge plunge attacks. As he loses these effects when swapped off field, Kaveh's primary role is to remain on field and consistently attack, using his Dendro Infusion and Elemental Skill to constantly generate more cores. With a 20 second cooldown and 80 energy cost, Kaveh's burst is relatively expensive, but less noticeable since his on field playstyle allows him to personally collect most energy orbs. Instead of usual 200% requirements for off field supports, Kaveh can get away with 160% or less. Elemental Skill, Kaveh's second priority talent investment, Artistic Ingenuity is a beautifully simple ability resembling of those circle drawing compasses, dealing AoE dendro damage and applying AoE dendro application, generating two dendro particles and exploding all dendro cores in its range instantly. Combined with his Ascension 1 passive, you don't have to fear dendro core self damage, as Kaveh gracefully heals some of the damage back up proportional to his total elemental mastery. With a 6 second cooldown and Kaveh's on field playstyle, this ability gets on cooldown use and typically gets 2 to 3 activations per his burst. Normal Charge Attack. While he is on the field and will be using normal attack consistently, they are used for Dendro application rather than damage, so his talent level here is not inherently that important. All of his multipliers here are attack scaling, and so for the most part you won't be leveling them unless you decide to run it on field spread DPS Kave. Talent Investment is very straightforward. Elemental Burst, over Elemental Skill, over Normal Charge Attack. Technically, only his Elemental Burst needs to be leveled to increase the Dendro Core bonus damage for a Bloom Focus build, as his Elemental Skill and Normal Charge Attacks only increase his damage multipliers which scale off of attack. If you decide to run Spread DPS Kave, then all three of his abilities should be leveled up in that order. Now, Kave's playstyle is pretty simplistic. In both a Bloom or a Spread team, Kave is the on-field protagonist, activating his burst to infuse his attacks with Dendro quickly stacking his Ascension 4 passive for free 100 Elemental Mastery, and then using his skill on cooldown or whenever there's cores available to pop. In a Nilu comp, the Dendro cores explode anyway, so his skill is just used as an extra wave of AoE Dendro application to generate more. Regardless of team comp, I'd recommend dash cancelling his 4th normal attack, as it not only has the highest delay, but it has the least amount of horizontal area coverage. Weapons. When building Kaveh, he primarily only cares about two stats, Elemental Mastery and Energy Recharge. If you do decide to run Spread Kaveh DPS, you know what to do. Between EM and ER, I usually prefer ER weapons, as their passives are generally much more valuable than those on Elemental Mastery. Depending on whether you run an ER or EM weapon, your timepiece will alternate EM or ER to fit his overall stat needs. My personal preference is running Favonius Greatsword for a huge energy recharge stat stick as well as a utility passive for the team. And though the passive does need reasonable crit rate to activate consistently, I found that running only 20-30% to is enough since not only is he primarily on field during his burst, his normal attacks and skill are pseudo AoE and give many chances to proc every 6 seconds. My current build on Favonius runs 28% crit rate, and I have not noticed any long-term problems with his Favonius proc rate. Other energy recharge weapons with decent value include Forest Regalia, energy recharge stat stick and an elemental mastery leaf that Kabe himself can pick up. Sacrificial Greatsword, also an energy recharge stat stick though much less amount and provides more activations of his elemental skill. 
K Nagamasa, energy recharge stat stick with slightly more flat energy return. And Skyward Pride, just a 5 star ER stat stick. For our EM weapons, highest elemental mastery, including relevant passives, is all that matters. None of them have utility for the team, so all you're looking for is the highest stat stick to improve Kaveh's personal bloom damage. At level 90, this is our list. Milled Flower tops out at 206, combined with its passive. Blood Tainted gives 187. Akira Aqua and Rain Slasher give 165. And then for spread DPS, prioritize your highest crit rate or crit damage weapon to enhance overall spread damage. Artifacts and stats. For Kave, his artifact options very closely resemble those of Hyperbloom, Virgin Enablers, as his goal is to create Dendro Cores and explode them for highest DPS. If your team does not run anyone on 4 Beast Deepwood, it's his role to do so. If someone else does run 4-piece Deepwood, then Kabe himself can stack as much Elemental Mastery or the 4-piece Flower of Paradise set for increased bloom damage. 4-piece Gilded, 2-piece 2-piece Elemental Mastery combos, or the 4-piece Flower set like I mentioned are all excellent options in this regard. If you're running spread DPS Kabe, 4-piece Gilded or 2-piece 2-piece Elemental Mastery combos will be prioritized for maximizing general spread DPS. Main stat choices. For Kabe, there are really only two distinct paths that I would consider which is either the full Elemental Mastery build for maximized bloom damage or a spread DPS build. If you're running full EM build, this will consist of an Energy Recharge or Elemental Mastery timepiece, EM Goblet, and EM Circlet. The timepiece will differ depending on your weapon type. Energy Recharge timepiece if EM weapon, and then EM timepiece if Energy Recharge weapon. This allows you to maintain a solid threshold of about 160% recharge in either situation. For those of you running Flavonius Greatsword, aim for 15-25% to crit rate from substats on top of the base 5% for passive activations. And then for the spread DPS build, EM over an attack timepiece, both are okay. Dendro Goblet and a Crit Circlet. This is your standard spread DPS build and Kabe does not deviate. Recommended stats. So we've discussed his weapons and artifacts. Let's combine these to create a template build. Like most Dendro units, level 90 is highly recommended for Kabe to maximize his base bloom damage, EM ascension stat, and base spread DPS. The only two stats that really matter on him are his total EM and amount of recharge. If you decide to build him spread DPS, you will also consider his crit rate crit damage to be decent ratio. Most likely you will be achieving 60 to 120 here if you're doing spread DPS. For me, I'm using a Favonius Greatsword at R5, and my Kabe sits at a con comfortable 840 Elemental Mastery with 210% recharge. In general, for EM, as high as you can possibly get. I really wouldn't expect anything under 700 though for Blooms. My energy recharge ended up way above the recommendation of 160%, so don't worry if you can't achieve this. And then lastly, just above 20% crit rate for Favonius procs. Overall, his build path is pretty simplistic and only requires two effective stats to make worth. The most difficult part of this build is probably getting the EM main stat artifacts. Constellations. While Kabe can work by himself at Constellation 0, his bloom capabilities are fairly limited to the cooldown of his skill. If you do decide to invest in C0 Kabe, you may want to combine him with Nilu so that you can skip his skill usage altogether, but still get stacking benefits of increased bloom damage. More on that when discussing team comps. Once he reaches full C6, then his kit feels much more alive and standalone in relevant comps. C1 makes him tankier to Dendro core damage and increases the effectiveness of his A1 passive healing. Nothing too crazy. C2 increased attack speed during his burst infusion. This makes his normal attacks feel a lot more fluid and overall slightly increases his dendro application in the long run. C3, C5, plus 3 levels to burst and skill. C4, further increased dendro core bloom damage, additively stacking with his own burst damage bonus and Nilu's ascension 4 passive. C6, his burst infusion now periodically activates a mini elemental skill, dealing AoE dendro damage and popping all dendro cores instantly. This can happen once every 3 seconds and much more effectively allows him to pop Dendro Cores. With C6, he is much more self-sustainable and does not require Nilu's passive to be effective, but still can be used simultaneously with her for even more Dendro application overall. This leads us into team comps. Even if he can pop the cores himself, I find that combining him with Nilu and Baiju enables another incredibly strong Super Bloom team that does not need Nahida. Definitely his strongest team comp, this Super Bloom team consists of Kave plus Baiju plus Nilu and Xingqiu or Yelon. Kave is the on field dendro driver and primary bloom generator. Built full elemental mastery, Kave can easily heal up the self bloom damage taken while also triggering them dealing massive damage. Baiju is the off-field dendro support, providing consistent shields and heals to keep Kave topped up while he smothers himself in grass. Nilu is of course the cornerstone of this team, setting up and activating her super blooms before reactions take place. Xingqiu or Yelan is the final piece, providing consistent off-field hydro application at a fast enough speed to equalize the dendro. 
Now, if you choose not to use Nilu here, but still would like close to the same bloom effect, you can replace her with any other decently effective off-field hydro applier, but I would highly recommend your Kave be at least C6 for decent value. Without C6, Kave struggles to have consistent bloom explosions because he can only rely on his 6 second cooldown elemental skill and the initial pop from his burst or wait out their natural duration. And a spin-off to the usual Bloom teams, Kave unironically makes an excellent core member to the Shatter Bloom universe. The only character with a built-in Claymore, plus Elemental Mastery, plus Elemental Infusion design, Kave can make the 4-fun Shatter Bloom comp into an eye-opening reality. Consisting of Kave plus Offield Hydro plus Rosaria and a Flex Slot, Kave combines the usual Dendro Core DPS with Shatter Damage from his Claymore attacks on Frozen Enemies to deal a mixture of Dendro and Physical Damage. His usual build does not change, as both Bloom Damage and Shatter scale off of Elemental Mastery and Level. The 4 slot can either be Double Dendro, Double Cryo, or a Nemo, and ideally add survivability into the team comp to keep Kave alive. And while these are his two main comps where he shines, he is also able to be any typical Dendo driver in a Hyper Bloom or Burgeon comp or as a spread TPS. Both of these team comps don't make use of his overall kit and typical stat layout though, so I wouldn't recommend them unless it's a passion project for you. In Hyper Bloom or Burgeon, Kaveh's own elemental magic will not be used since those Dendro cores will be reacted by your Electro or Pyro applier. In spread DPS comps, Kaveh wants investment into your usual crit stats and focuses more on his Claymore damage than Bloom damage. Overall, Kaveh having access to Dendro Infusion by his burst makes him a very flexible character if the situation needs it. And that concludes an essential guide to Kaveh for patch 3.6. Boasting an elegant protagonist energy, Kabe proudly smacks enemies around with his claymore, whether it's to shatter their dreams, force them to touch grass, or just to survey the area. While I do recommend C6 for investment value, C0 is more than capable of achieving greatness and showing off his baby girl elegance. Wishing all Kabe wanters become Kabe havers. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of him in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Take care.